Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella here from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Journey Adventure Quest, or Jack. Game designed by Jesse Stacey, Brandon Beam and Tommy Noel, and published by Triceratops Games. We are using a prototype copy here of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it! Journey Adventure Quest is a card drafting game for two to six players. Over three rounds or journeys of play, players will draft equipment cards and spells in order to build up their strength, knowledge, wisdom, wealth, and ultimately victory point gems. At the end of each journey, the players will face an increasingly strong set of monsters. And by the end of the game, they'll have tried to build up equipment and spells to meet their own personal adventure cards and compete for the common quest objectives. The player who earns the most victory gems wins the game. To set up the game, first make two choices. Your player count and whether you're playing a competitive or non-competitive game. Be clear that this doesn't mean cooperative. The non-competitive mode simply has no negative interactions between players. For example, on these quest cards, the non-competitive version will give players points based on how many swords they achieve. The competitive mode sees players fight for first and second place. Now go through all cards in all decks and look at the icons in the bottom corners to remove any cards that don't correspond to your mode. These cards would be used only in the non-competitive mode. This one would be used at four players or higher and this one at five players or higher. Shuffle the journey, adventure, quest and level one, two and three monster cards. The blue monster loot cards and the equipment slot cards are not shuffled. Deal one monster of each level into a face down row. Deal three quests into a face up row. Give each player a player board, three coins and their equipment slot cards, a helmet, chest, weapon, off-hand, belt, and spells. Belts are used only at four players or higher. Deal each player five adventure cards. Players look at them, choose three to keep face down, and discard the other two, also face down. Keep the token pools nearby. Attack, knowledge, defense, victory gems, coins, and blood. At two players, choose a first player who takes the turn token, and at three or more players, place the navigation token clockwise side up. You're now ready to play. Journey Adventure Quest is a card drafting game which takes place over three rounds, or journeys. What I'm about to describe is the rules for the standard three to six player game. There are a few differences at two players. The first step of a journey is to reveal the next monster, flipping the next level monster card face up for all to see. If this is the second or third round, you'll place it overlapping any previous ones like so. So you can only see the top text or the left bar of the cards that preceded it. Then if you're playing the competitive mode, sort through the monster loot deck until you find the loot card corresponding to this monster. And it will have the same top text as the card you flipped. Monster loot is not used in the non-competitive game. Deal each player a hand of seven cards from the journey deck. Next is day one, and here you will draft a total of three cards and then play those three cards. The first step is to look at your hand of seven cards and choose the one that you want to play at dawn. Take it from your hand and play it face down on the dawn slot, and then pass your hand in the direction shown on the navigation token. So, in this case, clockwise. You will now receive a hand of six cards from the player on your right. From your new hand, choose your noon card and play that face down, handing the cards on and receiving five from your neighbor. Choose which of those to play at dusk, hand the remaining cards on and keep the four cards you receive face down for now. Now you'll play the three cards that you've chosen. All players simultaneously flip their Dawn cards and then resolve it, which will usually involve moving it into an equipment or spell slot. Players will then simultaneously resolve their Noon cards 
and then their Dusk cards. Exactly how you resolve cards we'll come back to shortly. Now repeat the process for day two of the journey. You will draft a Dawn card, then you'll draft a Noon card, and then you'll draft a Dusk card, this time discarding the remaining card unseen. These cards are then once again resolved from Dawn to Noon to Dusk. To end the journey, all players will attempt to defeat the monster. Players will add up their battle statistics, which are attack, knowledge, and defense, from all of their equipment cards and any tokens that they've gathered during the round. If their attack and knowledge are enough to defeat the monster, then they receive the monster's bounty. While if the defense is not enough to meet the monster's attack, then the player takes blood, which is worth negative points at the end of the game. Finally, if you're using monster loot, then whoever has the most of the objective shown on that loot will gain this loot card to play in the same way as normal equipment. To finish the journey, you'll keep any equipment and spells that you've gathered, but you'll discard any attack, knowledge, or defense tokens that they've given you in this journey. Flip the navigation token and proceed to the next journey. After three journeys are done, the game is over and players will score additional points for meeting quests and adventures. So now let's look at how to play cards. There are three types of cards. Equipment with the square picture and the icon representing its equipment slot. Spells with the oval picture and the spell icon. And consumables with the octagon picture and the bag. Each resolves in a slightly different way. The first step of playing any equipment card is to pay its cost, which is shown here in the top right corner. And this can be either coins, which you'll spend, or blood, which you'll gain. There are also many cards with no cost. If you can't pay or otherwise no longer wish to play the card, then at this point you can discard it face down and gain two coins. But assuming you do want to play the card, then you'll now move it to its matching slot in your equipment area. If it's the first card of that type, you'll simply put it on top of the slot card. But if there were any previous cards, then stagger it the way we saw before with the monsters. You'll cover up the image, the title, but not the descriptor, and any flags down here to the right of the left banner. All cards here now make up a single equipment item. This is a Hurricane Shaman Shattered Bones and its ongoing attributes are everything you can see on the left-hand banners and the flags that point off the top card. When you go to fight the monsters, this will count as negative one attack, one knowledge, and zero defense. However, that's at the end of the round. What we want to know now is what happens when you play the card. Here we've just flipped this, paid no cost, and now we resolve its immediate effects, which is everything printed on the bottom bar of the card. Here it's gaining two coins and healing for blood. So if the player did have blood at this point, then could return up to four of them back to the supply. A player who has no blood when taking healing wastes that effect. Sometimes you'll come across cards with conditional effects. Here, for example, this reward would be gained only if you flip this card at dawn, making the sequence that you take your cards important. Rewards showing the grey circle represent tokens. Here you would gain a knowledge token, a gem for a victory point, and a coin. As you'll recall, these will add to your knowledge in this journey, but will be discarded at the end of the journey, not carrying through the game. The effects of some cards may also interact with other players. This one, for example, gives all other players blood. Some cards also allow you to steal from opponents. And I don't have any examples in this prototype, but they'll all have the word steal on the card. The second type of card is a spell, which has a cost in the usual way. For your first spell, you'll place it on the spell equipment slot, and then gain everything printed in both the pink and brown box. So here are two attack tokens. Each subsequent spell you cast is placed covering the pink box of the top card, but not the brown box, and then you'll gain everything that's visible. So here an attack, a knowledge, a defense, and the attack from this bottom card again. 
Spells will only ever grant these tokens. They're not going to give you any permanent ongoing benefits. But these will become stronger and stronger the more spells you play. Do be warned, however, that spell cards, unlike most equipment cards, are not worth victory points in their own right. The final type of card is the consumable, and you'll pay the cost, gain the immediate reward, and then discard the card from the game. Cards are resolved simultaneously. All players will do their dawn cards, then their noon, then their dusk. Occasionally there'll be timing conflicts, and for this, remember the sequence pay, deal, heal, steal. First, all players will pay the costs on their cards. Then you'll do all deal benefits, which is anything that involves taking a token or a cube from the supply and adding it to a player. Only then do you do heal effects, returning cubes to the blood supply. And finally, any steal effects, which transfer tokens from one player to another. As long as you go in this sequence, you'll never have any timing conflicts. When the two days of drafting are done, the players will face the monster, and each player faces the monster individually. The monster's attributes, like equipment, comprise everything that's showing on the left bars and flags. So here, this monster has 3 life, 6 knowledge, and 6 attack. First resolve your attack against the monster. Your attack value must meet or exceed the monster's life, and your knowledge must meet or exceed the monster's knowledge to defeat it. This player has 6 attack and 6 knowledge, enough to defeat the Manticore. If you win, take the bounty showing on the bottom of the top card and take victory point tokens equal to all of the victory points on the monster, so here it's 7. If you fail, you simply don't get these rewards, but there's no other penalty. Then, whether you won or lost, the monster will attack back. Here the monster does 6 attack and this player has a total of 5 defense. The difference is made up in blood. Finally, and only if you're playing the competitive mode, you'll determine who, if anybody, gets the monster's loot. And this will be whichever player has the highest of the attributes shown in this circle, which can be from equipment or from tokens. The winning player does not have to have beaten the monster in combat. Whoever wins adds this loot to their equipment slot resolving it as you would any other equipment. If two or more players are tied, then nobody gets the loot, and all tied players may choose between a victory point and two coins. After three full journeys, the game is over. And note that unlike in other rounds, you won't discard temporary attribute tokens at the end of the round. You'll keep those, and they'll contribute to your final scoring. Now it's time to resolve your adventures and the common quests. Each of your adventures will show a series of card types that you need to have in your collection to complete it. Here you'd need 2 chest equipment, 2 black guild equipment, and 3 red guild equipment. I don't meet the black guild requirement, so I wouldn't score this card. Here I'd need 3 weapons, which I also don't have. And here I need 2 spells, 3 offhand equipment, and 3 yellow guild. When resolving final scoring, if you have any rainbow grey guild cards, you can choose that to be one other guild type. So here if I chose this to be yellow guild, I would have my three yellow guild as well as the other items, and therefore I could score this adventure. Take its points and then remove the card. Then score the quests. In non-competitive mode, you'll get points based on how much of these you have. So here. A total of 6 knowledge for 3 points, 4 spells for 7 points, and 3 red guild for 5. In the competitive mode, the player who best meets the objective scores 7 points, and second best scores 3 points. In the event of a tie, all players gain the higher number of points. Then gain all the points printed on the bottom left corners of your equipment cards, and cash in leftover money at 3 to 1. Finally, you'll suffer penalties. Any equipment slot that is empty loses you 5 points, and note that this does not apply to the spell slot. And you'll lose 1 point for each blood token you hold. The player with the highest score wins, and if tied, whoever has the most money wins. 
If still tied, most spells, and if still tied, victory is shared. When playing with two players, the card draft will work slightly differently. At the start of each day, instead of dealing seven cards to each player, you'll deal seven cards face up and one card face down in the center of the table. One player will have the first player token. Starting from that player, players will go back and forward, choosing cards from the table to add to their display, starting with dawn, then noon, then dusk. Once two cards remain, those are both discarded from the game, and then you'll play your cards in the normal way. The turn token will move through the game, although not after every day. On the first journey, player one will take the turn token on day one, and then player two on day two. Then in journey two, player two will start with the turn token, then player one. Then on journey three, player one will start with it, then player two. Other than this change to the draft, all rules stay the same at two players. And that's how to play Journey Adventure Quest. Check out the project page of Journey Adventure Quest. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.